What's going on, good people? This is Byron back with another episode of the REI Next Door Show, man. And today, a very, very special episode um, because we got a teacher that ended up stopped teaching and started wholesaling. Um, and man, I'm excited to hear the story, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know. So, Man, I ain't even gonna keep talking. I'm gonna go ahead and bring him in so you know, so y'all can meet him yourself. Justin, what's going on, man? Nothing much. How you doing today? I'm good, man. Good. So I'm, I'm excited about this episode, man. I don't know if I've been more excited about any episode, you know, more than this one, you know. So it's kind of it hit kind of close to home, you know, with, with the right. teaching, you know. You know, out of this, you know, out of education, you know, so wholesale and real estate. Right, and yeah. So, so like, what got you into teaching? Where are you at? And what got you into teaching in the first place? So, you got to go all the way back to <laughs> 2014. So, I was, uh, I had graduated college May 2014. Um, had a nice little summer job working at a um at a court yeah at a courthouse like a clerk of court so i was doing that for like throughout that summer after i graduated and then that was set to end in september of 2014 so kind of around that time i was like all right you know i i know i don't want to be in the office all day like I don't want to sit at a cubicle and then, you know, be at a computer all day. So I want to do something else where I'm we move around a little bit. So I had a family member. Um, she told me, she was like, Hey, my school is looking for, you know, people to be a, a paraprofessional, which is like a teacher assistant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, shoot, well, I mean, I, I'm not doing anything else after this. I don't want to stay here. So I'll go ahead and apply and do it. So that's kind of what I did. That got my start in education. I, was, I, I did a year uh, working in fourth grade as a paraprofessional oh. teacher assistant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did fourth grade. I did that for a year. And then it just so happened uh, one of the PE one of the PE coaches at the school was retiring at, at the end of that year. Oh, so everybody was already reaching out to me. It was like, Hey, you should just go ahead and, and see about doing PE teaching. Like well, you already here, you know, you got a degree, just go take the certification test and see if you can, you know, get hired here. And so I did that. That was what the summer of 2015, I did that. And then, um, yeah, the principal, she wanted to keep me on campus. So she was like, yeah, okay, he's retired. You can go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and hire you for this, this PE uh, teacher role. That's, so that's, that's how you got to start in education. Correct, uh, yeah. And teaching four graders, what is it like teaching four graders, man? I'm, dude, I promise I was struggling uh, I mean, that's kind of why I didn't stay in the classroom because of that. <laughs> Was, I mean, granted, I mean, I those kids, man. I mean, they they good kids. I mean, they the, the school I was at, man. It was a rough environment. It was inner city. It was in the hood. So it was like you know, a lot of, uh, this was in St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. But um, yeah, it was it was challenging, man. It was tough because you you know you dealing with kids that didn't have the proper upbringing and, you know, education leading up to that grade level. So you're dealing with kids that, that can barely read in the fourth grade or can, you know, yeah, there's a lot of deficiencies yeah. that wasn't addressed. So it's like, it's a struggle to get them, you know, to really, yeah, to learn this, this stuff when it's like very foreign to them. So yeah, it was definitely a challenge. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, because, um, shoot, I was kind of in a probably a similar situation, but at high school, you know, hard. It was hard. It was challenging, but it's still rewarding. Um, but it's definitely a challenge, man. So, but you endured high 
How many years again? So I did one year as the the teacher assistant in fourth grade, and then the last what seven years I was doing physical education. So I did three years, actually eight last eight years. Yeah, because I did three years down in Florida. Um, yeah teaching physical education at that same school and then uh relocated my wife and i we relocated out here to texas uh oh, okay. dallas fort worth texas uh hey. back in, yeah we did that back in 2018 so the last five years i was doing the same thing out here yeah so you start teaching in dallas is that where you start wholesaling so yeah, actually, once we came out here is when I actually got exposed to like real estate and like wholesaling, just everything. So once I got out here, away from Florida, you know, the hometown, like it's kind of yeah. different because in the hometowns, like everybody's doing similar stuff, so you don't really get exposed to something new. It's just like everybody you know everybody, and everybody's doing the same thing just going to, you know, getting a job and working. So you don't really see anything new. But once I got out here, it kind of exposed, you know, to some different things and, like, different uh, career paths and whatnot. Yeah, no doubt, man. You kind of, in your hometown, you kind of had your circle already. Right. And you grew up with them, so y'all kind of know what you know. You know right. what I'm saying? But it's hard to think of something new. When you go to somewhere else, you start creating new circles, you meet new people that know new stuff. So, yeah, I feel you on that. It kind of, like, looking back at it, that same kind of thing happened to me. So, like, what exposed you to real estate? Um, so, it was actually, and it's crazy. So, when I moved, I, I actually had a cousin. My cousin, Wayne, who lives in Florida, he actually was the first one. Like, I kind of seen some stuff, you know, just being around, moving around out here. But he was actually the first one that told me about wholesaling. Yeah. So he sent me, um, he told me about it. And then he sent, this was like, I remember specifically, this is like September 2019. Yeah. September 2019. He sent me, yeah, he sent me Mark Whitten. I don't know if you're familiar with Mark Whitten. Out of, uh, he, he's out of Baltimore. Oh, okay. But he was on a breakfast club, so it was a Mark, oh, okay. a Mark winner. Yeah, he was on a breakfast club, and his whole interview, he was just talking about wholesaling. He was like, yeah, you know, he just broke down the process. And I was like, dang, like, I never heard of that in my life. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So literally, I probably watched that interview, like, on a Friday and went just driving for dollars on the Sunday on that same, like that same weekend. I was just like, shoot, he talked about driving for dollars, I believe in that video. And I was like, Oh, I'm about to just go to some areas and just drive, for, look for some houses. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you, man. So you got exposed, your cousin see your video and you look at it like, man, I can do this. Right. And you still teaching mm -hmm. and you start driving around. This is 2019. Yeah, this is September 2019. That's when I got exposed to it and just started, you know, just taking that imperfect action. Yeah. So what did you start doing then? Did you find anything when you were driving around? Funny that, and it's, it's actually crazy. So there's, this, and this is why follow-up is key. I know this is a later down the line. So there's, we actually have, from me driving for dollars back in 2019, like September to like November, December ish, we actually have two properties under contract from those driving for dollars lists back in 2019. Like two of them today, yeah. we have under contract today. I mean, of course, we, it was a long follow up process, and we don't we, we went through like three different CRMs and everything, but. Those, you know, there's two properties from that list of me taking action back in 2019 that we actually have under contract today. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, 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 that's cool. Cool. but really what launched the business, like as far as like structuring it like a business. So I have a business partner, Andrew, and we, and it's funny because 
we met in a Facebook group, in an investor Facebook group. So this yeah. was about this was about November 2019. Like he was already working for another wholesaling company. He was working for a company, a wholesaling company doing transaction coordination. Oh, man. okay. So I was reaching out to him just from Facebook, like asking him about different questions about you know wholesaling, like he and he was just responsive to it. So then I think around like January 2020, we kind of like sat down and it was just like, all right, let's figure out a way to, you know, make, you know, come together and make this into a business. And so that's kind of what really, you know, launched, launched us from there. And you hadn't done any deals at that time? No, I haven't done any deals at that time. That's crazy, man. We're going to go ahead and shout out some people that's coming through, though, man. We got my guy Cass coming through, man, checking us out. Massive action. Love that name, man. Jamie Buck, what's up, man? Uh, yeah, the audio probably going to be good inside my office yet. Still got to get that hooked up. Uh, Ali coming through. Yo, what's up, man? Yo, Rolex coming through. And Jordan, man, still out there with the burning houses, man. But, uh, yeah, let's get back to the interview, man. Had to shout my crew out. But, um... But yeah, man, so you moved to Dallas, you still had done any deals, you meet this guy on Facebook, you still had done any deals, and like, how much time has went by between the time that you tried to drive around for dollars and you meet this guy? Um, I would say, yeah, like November. So that was, I was started, I started doing like a little bit of driving for dollars, like September, 2019. I met Andrew November 2019. Um, we actually, yeah, so we actually, yeah, because he already had, a, so he kind of, he was working for a wholesaling company doing transaction coordination. And then he also was trying to do his own little thing, which ultimately led to him being fired down the line. Because, you know, most oh, people, okay. yeah, but so he had a cold caller and he had a list of probates. So he yeah. had he had already hired a caller, but neither one of us knew what we were doing. Yeah. But we actually, because I think I said January 2020. So actually December 2019, we actually talked about doing something together. And yeah. then we ended up putting a property under contract. I actually did it in January 2020 from one of his probate lists. Okay. So it took you August, September, October, November, December. It took you about five months, five, six months to get someone to kind of track. Right, yeah. So he had a probate list. He had a cold caller. Um, I, I just followed up with the dude. I think I sent, I think I still got the text message saved. I just sent him a text message just like, hey, would you consider this offer? And he was like, yeah, let me talk to my wife. And then he talked to the wife and said it was good to go. So then we ended up putting him under contract in January 2020. Yeah. And then, um, that property sold in February, like mid February, 2020, and we yeah. three thousand dollars. That was the first deal. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So you got on the contract in January, and then it closed. How many days it took to close? Um, a little shoot, probably a little, little bit under thirty days or so. Or yeah. A little bit. You know, that, like, how long does it really take to close these deals? You know, it's kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, so this one, like I said, like typically with probate, you know, you got to wait through it, wait until it gets done. But this one was already done. Like they already finalized the probate. They had the property. He was already like, hey, I have another property. So we really just like probate's been done. We're just trying to get rid of this as soon as possible. Yeah, that's what's up. And you're into them. And man, they ready to go. Uh, right. I was just. Coming back from the property, I was in you up letting you know I had somebody that was ready to go. They're like, let's close next week. So, mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah, it kind of goes down like that sometimes. So, you get your first deal, you said it was 3K. How do you feel when you get your first deal, man? Um, Man, it was just that proof of concept. Yeah. It's just like, okay, this is real. Yeah. This is like, okay, this is legit. And it really, you know, just let me know, like, okay. Just made three thousand dollars off a deal, and at the time, like I'm teaching, I'm like, that's almost what I'm making a month, like yeah. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit under, 
you know, but I'm, you know, dang, oh, yeah. yeah, close enough to you making a month, and it's just like, okay, all right, so that's a proof of concept. Like, all right, let's see what what happens. Like, it was just trial and error, learning along the way. And so I think my partner, he got fired. He got fired, I think, shortly after that deal closed, he got fired from that company. Yeah. Cause they, and then the reason he got fired is because they actually we we ended up getting another property like end of February and he had put it on a Facebook investor page and they saw it. Oh and they was like, Oh hey, this is a conflict of interest, we gotta let you go. So oh, okay. and his story is a little bit different because he once they let him go, he just went in full time and he was doing this like full time. Yeah since then since they let him go but i was the one still um had the you know had my teaching job throughout the whole time yeah so what do y'all start doing like y'all getting these probates right and what y'all getting the probates from uh man this was so long ago i don't know where he got it from i think we got it i might have got it directly from the county yeah i can't even i can't even remember but I mean that was short lived. Like we we did the probate list for like a little bit, and then we kind of like went away from it because just the time factor. Yeah. The time in the take for these probates and deals to get done, and then it's like they got ten other people following up with them at the same time, and it's just like we need somebody. We needed something a little bit quicker, so then we kind of pivoted to you know code violations and tax delinquents and stuff like that. So y'all focus on niche lists. At that time, yeah. At that time, yeah. That's what we we kind of we made that pivot. But me, mind you, though, we ended up we closed that first probate deal. We closed our second deal, April of twenty twenty. That yeah. came. That was actually another dropping for dollars lead. And then our third deal which was our biggest deal at the time was like, I think we made like $36,000, but that came from a pro. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> it was like the perfect, and, and so many things could have went wrong on that deal, man, but it, yeah. it, it, it still went through. It was just like the perfect storm. My partner, he, we've been calling this lady for like a bunch of times but he was the only one to leave a voicemail and so her sister her sister called him back and was like hey you know mary said she you know she said the next person that reaches out she wants to go ahead and set an appointment to you know to sell the property to them I was oh, like, oh okay so hey, we both actually in the right place, man. right place at the right time and just continue hey. to be consistent like he left that voicemail we went out, we both went out there and went to the property, met her, got her under contract. And then, yeah, it was, you know, probably about another 30 days or so for that one to close, but $36,000 on our third, that was our third deal back in May, that closed in May, 2020. Dang, that's crazy. That 36 must have changed a lot. What did y'all start doing after that 36? I'm pretty sure y'all started really setting up the business yeah so so really that's what because all throughout that time we really wasn't operating under llc like my business partner he had an llc with his wife already established but they weren't using it but me and him did not have anything together so in may in may of 2020 that's when we actually set up our own llc together our operating agreement together our our, our business bank account, all of that stuff. We had got all that set up during that same month in May 2020. Dang, yeah, that's, that's the way to do it, man. I never had a partner, but yeah, getting that LLC step set up and kind of moving forward in that direction is the way to go. You know, people like to do business with businesses. Right, uh, for sure. So, so kind of tell us, you know, what the business began to look like you know, as you start picking up, you know, how was it, what kind of marketing were y'all doing? And who were y'all targeting? So. And this is all happening in Fort Worth, right? Yeah, Dallas, Fort Worth. Yeah, we were oh. doing our deals. So prior to that deal, so 
really, if we back up a little bit, so when the pandemic happened, when everything shut down, it was really like a blessing for me because it freed me up with time because everything was virtual. So I'm doing like virtual lessons for my students, like PE, like recording videos of workouts. And but it gave me a whole bunch of time. So we were actually taking shifts on cold calling. So my partner, he would call from like eight to twelve cold call like this is all during the pandemic he would call 8 to 12 and i would call from 3 to 7 i would call in the afternoon time and we we were doing that like monday through friday like just cold calling cold calling cold calling then kind of when we closed that big deal then we kind of started okay let's get some cold callers let's get some more people you know people that's reaching out you know, let's go ahead and get some cold callers in place like some people that'll make some calls for us i think we hired maybe what two one or two cold callers at that time but it was still relatively like we were still doing like following up and you know we were both following up with sellers and both you know trying to put people on the contract so then as the months went on we kind of was like all right we need to really split our roles up so that way we're not stepping on top of each other. Yeah, let's see. Because, yeah, because it was like, we both doing dispositions, we both doing acquisitions, and you doing transactions, so it was just like, all right, let's separate this. So then that's, I would say, like, the fall of 2020, we kind of separated the roles to where I would just be, I would just be in charge of dispositions and, like, working with the buyers. Then my partner, Andrew, would just do uh, the acquisitions. He'll go into the appointments, and he would help with like transactions since he was already a transaction coordinator. Yeah, kind of knew that that process, the title process, a little bit. So, yeah, that's that's how we did it. For you know, we did that pretty much all up to the remainder of 2020 and going into 2021. Yeah. So, what is what do y'all business look like today? Like, is they way or have y'all asked people or? Yes. So, as we stand today, we have five in house cold callers. Man. We have two, we have two uh, lead managers. Man. We have a, a in house transaction coordinator. Ooh. And we have one acquisition rep. And we just hired another acquisition rep to start next week. That's that's kind of you know, we kind of had everything delegated, but our acquisition part and disposition. And it was just we we had some issues with some people. We had two acquisitions uh, towards the end of last year, but we had to get rid of them. It 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 yeah, it messed our business up. We hired the wrong people for the wrong seats. Yeah, and, yeah, that thing almost took us out with those hires, but I mean, oh, dang, y'all yeah. got the right people in the right seats, man. Man, like, yeah, all people, all that, like, which people are VAs or any other VAs? Or? So, that's a good question. So, the cold callers are all VAs, they like in South America. Oh, okay. Our lead man, where are South American VAs from, man? Uh, you know, everybody talks about South America. Where do you get these from? Yeah, so we so we hired our cold caller Carlos. We hired him back in 2020. He was one of the cold caller hires we had back in 2020. But he yeah. actually scaled up his operation. So now he was making calls, but now he's managing callers. So we <laughs> just kept him employed and he just brings the, the callers and manages them, do the quality control and everything. But um, our lead manager, we have one lead manager uh, in the Philippines, another lead manager. She's in Nicaragua. Um, Oh, we have a disposition assistant. She's virtual. She's in Nicaragua as well. Um, now the transaction coordinator, she's in house. She's she's local, and our acquisition rep is local. Okay. Because they they, they do a lot more face to face stuff, having to meet sellers and different things like that. So they're they're local. So how do you pay? What do y'all do for marketing? So for marketing, like I mentioned, we have cold callers. We're doing cold calling. We also do uh, radio, which that is, that is something. We, yeah, we invested into radio, I think. 20, How much that cost, man? Huh? How much that cost? Man. Crazy. So 
we're actually on two stations right now. We did our initial station. I think we were paying like three thousand dollars. Oh. Yeah, three thousand dollars a month. That's crazy. Did y'all have but, to pay someone to make the commercial? Huh? Well, y'all did it. No, my 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 business partner Andrew. He's the one on the commercial. He records. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So he goes to the he goes to the uh he goes to the actual radio station and record it. Like he we updated. You know, you got to keep it fresh and whatnot. But we were doing that since 2021, early 2021, I believe. We started that one, but that's by far our best marketing channel. Like, really? Yeah, man. It's the quality of the lead. When they come in, man, most of the time, like they, they, they're ready to go. Like, very, you know, some of them you still got to follow up with, you know, as usual. But most of the time, when they come in, like they ready to go. Like within, you know, within two weeks of coming into the to the pipeline. How did y'all get hooked up with a radio station? Like, is it a big like radio station in yeah. Dallas, or is it like? Yeah, it's it's oh. one. Of the, no, it's one of the 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 biggest. But R and B radio stations out here. Um, R&B, yeah, that's good too. The R and B, a little bit older crowd. Yeah, that's little our clientele. R&B. Clientele, and we 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 get properties right in the areas that we're already familiar with. We already got tons of buyers, so it's like running numbers on them is very easy because we know what people are paying for it. So it's like, but we got we really just reached out directly. Like we went directly to the radio station and started the negotiations. I think we listened to, um, dang, what was his name? He was on wholesaling Inc. Uh, uh, Brent huh? Brent Daniels? Not Brent Daniels. It was somebody else. What was it? I forgot his name. He always on there. Just yeah. He always on there talking about radio. Dang. I, his name is just slipping my mind. No. No, no, not they. They mainly do that stuff too. So I can't remember his name, but he would always talk about radio. And then my partner was just like, "Hey, we should just get us a try. Like, we got some extra funds to spend. Like, let's see it." And we've been doing it ever since. Man, you got me thinking about some radio, man. <laughs> I, I would say look into it, man, because it's it's. I think we get like maybe like three or four drops a day, or something, or something around that Monday through Friday. So the radio goes out. Mm-hmm. You get one number to call. Yep. It comes in. Correct. Who takes that call? So we have an answering service. We use Nexa. Oh. Okay. They're like, they, they, it's almost right. like call. A lot of people use Call Porter. It's very similar. Nexa is just like Call Porter. They, you know, so they they're available twenty four seven. So. Cause we just never know when the call may come in for radio, so we don't take it. You know, no one on our internal team takes that call, that initial call. Like it always goes through the answering service. They just get the basic information, name, number, property address, and all right, you know, we'll send it. In. They send it to our CRM. Then um, typically we'll have our lead manager follow up from there. Dang man, you gotta think about radio, man. You gotta think about radio. So. Cold calling and radio. You think yep. the best uh, marketing strategy is radio or cold calling? Which one? So as far as quality, radio for sure. Yeah. But you're not going to get the quantity. Yeah. So that's where it's like, like it, and it's kind of up and down. Like, I mean, it's, it's consistent, but you may, you may have a week to where you only have one person call in from the radio station and it's not a lead. So, it's kind of something to expect, but then the next week it may have three people call in, and then two of them you're able to put on the contract. Like it's right. it's just being consistent. Like if you consistently do it, like you'll see the results. Because our numbers is like it was at one point where it was like one in four leads was a contract. Dang. It's not like that now. It's not like that now. It's a little bit higher. I think we might be pushing almost to ten. I have I, I don't have it in front of me, but when we first started, it was like one in four. Like we, Man, it was it was like month after month, like one in four, one in four, one in four, one in four. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, I never thought of radio, man. But uh, and it sounds like you crush your cold call too. So, what yeah. kind of call are you when y'all doing? Are y'all only in Fort Worth? Are y'all branch out other places? No, nah, we only 
do Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex right now. Like we, we stay, we only stay. We rather go deep in our market than to try to branch out and do a bunch of multiple markets because we already established a lot of relationships with buyers and like title companies, different things like that. So it's like even with speaking of title companies, man, I got a question for you. This is like personal right here, man. I got a Dallas, I got a property lot up in Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. And it's like a 30K deal. And uh, that young, um, they saying that we, when we double close, we got to pay for the owner's title insurance. Because mm. everything is in Texas, you got to pay for the owner's title insurance. Like that. Uh, ah, man, it's been a, well, see. It's been a minute since we actually did. Uh, so this is where a good title company coming into play. So the la- typically when we double close, we use the buyer's fund. Like is is that did they are they able to? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. You use the buyer's fund. Yeah, so we never. So we pass through. Who, who do you, what title company are you? I use. I'm using Fidelity. Fidelity. So when we have to double, I mean we we got like a Rolodex of title company. We got like five or six of them on deck. But, if we're double closing and it's a cat and you know the buyer paying cash and we know we don't have to get transactional, we'll use capital title because they're able to pass pass it through. So yeah. we don't and we never was char- we, like we've never been charged those additional you know title policy on. I think everything they just I don't know how they set it up, but we've never yeah they never told us like oh y'all have to buy the owner policy and then they have to buy it. It was always hey this buyer's paying cash, we double closing. Pass it through, and that was it. Dude, I may have to uh, try to move title companies, man. They trying to get me. They about to get me for almost fifteen hundred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 one of the things because I mean, even with the title company use, like it's yeah, it's that's probably the number one most important relationship in this business because they make a break deals. Yeah, like if you have a if you have somebody that's not communicating or they messing up the HUDs and they not getting people paid on time, like man, you in the world yeah. of trouble. I'm telling you, man. So like you got radio, you got cold going. Like how many deals are y'all doing? Like you doing radio? <laughs> uh, so on average, like on a monthly basis, I mean we're not doing a, a huge volume. Like we probably closing about four four deals at about mm, our spread I think our average spread right now is like 17 or 18,000 yeah, I, 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 I just I just kind of one of my uh, people I was working with wanted to go out to Texas and I was like okay went out there in Texas and damn like, man what's going on out here in Fort Worth man just look at this Okay. Yeah. So we ended up getting that. I'm like, man, four words sounds good, man. You know. Yeah, um, it's our like I said, we as of right now, like we just we went through a bad Q1 with those hires. So we just now really ramping up back to where we was at uh back in 2022. Like whole Q1 was slow. Yeah, I mean, Q1 was tough for a lot of people, man. Like even when I was at but I mean, I had like I had like two or three flips I did in Q1 though that really Man. that really pushed it up. But uh, yeah, we just we just closed on a flip. That Man. was that was a that was a nightmare, man. We went fifty k over budget. Whoa! That's a story. That's a story right there, man. We <laughs> go here, go here. How did you go fifty k over budget? So we picked it up November, yeah, November 2022. Um, I mean, we had the contract to come out and did everything, you know, got our initial quotes on the stuff. So originally we were probably looking about paying about 65000 for for the total rehab. And that was everything because it needed everything. I mean, we got found, we, we redid everything, foundation, HVAC, roof, plumbing. Now, the plumbing is what really hit us because originally I think we were only like anticipated to pay like five K or something for the plumbing. Yeah. 
but it was corroded so bad because the first they was just gonna go in there and like kind of like patch it up and make it make sure it's straight but the it was cast iron so it was corroded so bad they had to replace the whole entire plumbing system with the pvc so how much that cost man that was like 20 some 20 something k Oh, that's tough, right. man. That's tough. Yeah, and then like some other little things ended up happening. We had got our appliances. Somebody stole our appliances after we had it listed. How so, old yeah. was the property? Huh? How old was the property? Had to be old. How old was the property? It was like 60s, built in the 60s. Yeah, that's why, like, now what I do, man, you know, I, I keep my properties new up. Like, I don't try to mess with them older ones, man. I yeah. Play. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, especially with me not being as experienced, you know, uh, right. I try to pretty, you know, get stuff that's pretty clean, you know, keep the rehab at a minimum, and you get in, right. get out. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's the same, man. We not, I mean, it was a learning experience for sure. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the great thing is we got it such at a deep discount that we were able to make the money back to, yeah. pay the, to pay the business back our 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 lender got paid their money and then we were still able to pocket you know pocket a little bit of profit on it that's crazy man yeah that's that's the thing about finding these all market deals man getting them at such a discount even when you screw it up and stuff still you know you still end up you know walking out with a little bit of money um right. but man that's crazy man so Sound like your operation is going pretty good. When did you know, like, I'm, I got to stop teaching? Um, I would say it's always been a, at the top. Um, just because with my business partner doing it full time, like, it's, you know, granted we had the roles split up, but it was like certain things that he could do that I wasn't able to do, like even going to like certain events. And yeah. doing things like that, like I wasn't, I'm not able to do that because I'm teaching. So, I mean, going into this, this last school year, I mean, we just ended, I kind of want, you know, I kind of knew like, all right, I probably got like one more year left until, and I only reason, and I had to stay just due to some, some like family reasons. Like with my son, my son has like a, he has like a kidney disease. So. I had to keep the insurance. Yeah, he he actually had to get a surgery this two three weeks ago. He two weeks ago he just had a surgery, which I needed my you know my 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 uh my school insurance to you know help cover that surgery and whatnot. So that was that was in the way and then that, but kind of just yeah. So knowing, I was like, all right, at the end, like it, it's just very hard. Now, granted, the, what I was doing and like. My administrators, like they were supportive, like a hundred percent of everything that I was doing. So I, it was never like them pressing me, like, "Hey, you know, you know, if I had to call off to go do something or whatever." It was never an issue for them because they know what I was doing, and I was able to still, like, you know, take phone calls, you know, do certain things throughout the school day that I kind of structured. But it was just taking away a lot of time, man, because I'm there still eight hours and then yeah. trying to trying to get off, be with my son, and then it's like it leaves me like two hours once he go to sleep, like two hours to really like do anything that I need to do. And that's not enough time to, you know, truly, you know, build the business how we need to business. So it it just ultimately became like a conflict of interest. So it was just like all right, you know, I kind of got to do something about it. I mean, we had the proof of concept. It's not like I was just starting, like I'm just starting out, like I don't know how to structure a deal or get deals. Or anything like that. So we know how to make money, so it, it ain't, that that ain't going to be the issue. It's just, like, now I've kind of got to free up some time to really make this, like, a true business, because I was like, I can't have one foot in and one foot out and trying to yeah, gotta be all in, man. Yeah, trying to structure it like a true business. So that's that's kind of what led me to that. Man. And was there like a mindset thing, like 
mentally with you thinking, man, I'm like leaving the job. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's a big shift from being a yeah. person to an entrepreneur. Like, how did it mess with you mentally at all? For yeah. sure. I mean, I'm still like I'm still trying to process everything because I've been like my whole life. I've been work like I've never. I've never been fired. I've never really like technically quit a job. Yeah. Like I've always just been like the ideal worker. Like I go to work, yeah. my job, I go home. Yeah. Like I don't cause no problems. Like I never had to get called to a, you know to a meeting. Like hey, you know your behavior. Like I've never like I've just been the model citizen worker. Like I do my job. Yeah. Yeah. Ever, ever since I've been working, like even as a teenager, like I've never yeah. so just trying to get over that mentally like all right like man it, it's tough like i'm still trying to process it like dang like i'm really like on right now like i can't like i yeah i'm just trying to i'm still working on that man with my mindset but um i did read a book and it's a great book uh, it's called who moved my cheese oh i heard of that yeah i heard of that that kind of helped me with some perspective because it, it really talks about like fear and uh, the inability to change and adapt. Like what happens if you don't change and adapt yeah. to certain things in your life? And it's just like, okay, that kind of opened my eyes up. Like, yeah, I need to, you know, I've never took a real big risk or anything like that before. So it's just like, maybe this is what I need to really help myself personally get to the next level like i need to get out of the safety zone and out of my comfort zone and really like step out on faith to try to you know you know be be who god has called me to be ultimately so it's, it's one of those shifts for sure yeah no doubt man definitely like when i when i was going through it just thinking and praying about it and uh I would read books like you, man. I read a book called Curtis Calling by Ryan Holiday. And, uh, you know, just saying Curtis is calling. You know, you got to have the guts to take a chance, man. You got to have the guts to take a risk, you know. So, like, that was big for me, getting over that hurdle. Mentally, it was more than anything else, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. Because it's, it's just one of those things, man. Like, I didn't. Like, you know, typically you, you hear the story of people like, you know, going for, you know, entrepreneur to nine to five. Like they, they either getting fired or they hate their job. Yeah. But neither one of those things apply to me. Like I didn't get fired. Yeah. They actually want me to come back. Like they, they yeah. I was leaving. And two, I didn't necessarily hate what I was doing. Like it wasn't yeah. like that's what I'm saying. It's easy for I could easily be comfortable and do that for the next ten years. Yeah. Cause I didn't I necessarily I didn't hate it. Like it wasn't very bothersome to me. It's just knowing like, all right, if I really wanna like I can't do both. Like it's it's gonna ultimately break at some point. Like something's gonna break. Yeah, and what drove you to do this? Like you said, I think I was the same way, like you comfortable, like you got a job with benefits and you go to work every day. You gonna have retirement. You in a good environment. All this stuff is cool. Like you comfortable. You know what I'm saying? You make good, decent money. You right. able to live a decent life. Like what drove you to do something else? It's like why would you change something if you comfortable? Yeah, man. I mean, it's just one of those things. Like just stepping out on because the, the worst thing we we can't live or you know it's a it's a j cole quote that he said in the song Damn, i can't remember what song it was but he said the only thing worse than death is a regret filled coffin Man. oh actually it was crunch time the song crunch time yeah that's tough right? yeah. anything worse than death is a regret filled coffin so yeah, I remember that line too, man. Yeah, so it was just like, okay, it's crunch time. And it's just like, man, you don't want to, like, all we got is time. So it was like, if you don't do it now, it's easy to just push it off and try to, you know, I get to it. And, and also that book, Who uh, Who Moved My Cheese, because it talked about that. Like, 
one of the one of the mouse did not want to move and he was just like oh i'm good like and then ultimately the cheese was gone and then he panicked like because who's to say like yeah everything's going cool right now i don't know what the future holds and it's just like it's kind of one of those things where you gotta just step out and ultimately like it's like what's the worst that could happen like you end up being a teacher again yeah, yeah. We're gonna have it. Like, I, I got a degree. I got a certification. It's like, you can always like that. Ain't going nowhere. Like, I know people talk about AI and all this stuff. It's like, bro, teaching ain't going nowhere. You are gonna have to have somebody in the classroom regardless. Watch the third kids. <laughs> yeah, like somebody gonna be in there. So it's like, I'm not in a job where it's like I'm in a, that career is gonna be eliminated. So it's like, what's the worst that could happen? Honestly, like we gotta look at it. That's what I was telling people. People was even asking me, like, you really gonna do this? You really gonna do this? Like other teachers. And I'm like, the worst thing that can happen, I'm back here with you. Right. <laughs> and, and to speak on that, man, and like I've seen like this past, because I just finished up my last contract day on Tuesday. That's crazy. Um, but yeah. I had so many coworkers, like, you know, and, and it's like, I was never the one going around campus like, oh, man, hey, I'm doing real estate. I'm hosting. Like, I never was, like, bragging about it. Like, I always just kind of kept it to myself mostly. Like, a few people knew what I was doing, but not really a lot of them. But it's like once they found out, I was like, oh, dang, you doing this? Oh, you're not doing it? Like, so many people came up to me, and they're like, it's ultimately, like, they're counting on me to, to succeed because they – ultimately don't have the courage to step out and do what they really want to do so when they ask me like oh you really sure about this and it's like you know i can hear it in their voice like dang like they want to be able to leave too but it's just they haven't got to that point and now it's like they champion me it's like like they rooting for me to succeed because they want to see like dang like oh he's doing it like he stepped out and did it but they're still, you know, in a position like there's other things they want to do. And a lot, I talked to a lot of them. They was like, you know, I really want to do, you know, I, oh, yeah, I did look into real estate. I did look in I was like, well, what's stopping you? Well, yeah. you know, it's just and they just, you know, they get into the, well, you know, I haven't did this. And it's just like, I understand. But it's like, end of the day, you got to take action. Like, you can't just sit dormant. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man. But yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Just finished up teaching that. It's crazy. So, yeah, man. Now that you're out the door, now that you're out the door, you're done teaching, you know, what are some things like goals that you said that you want to do in real estate just in general? Well, for sure, our biggest thing is like right now at this moment, like, truly build out a real deal business not a not a large business but like really get to the point to where not automated but like we want to have certain things delegated to kind of free us up because my business part like we both got families like he have a wife and three kids i got a wife and a young son so it's like we want to be able to create something around the life that we want to live and not have to be you know constrained and tied down to the business so it's like this is our time to really focus in and build out certain systems and processes to where this thing is running on its own i mean granted we're still a part of it we still may be here doing some things here and there but ultimately like we want to be able to ha you know have the ability to take take a month off and just say hey we're going to traveling with the family like yeah we're going to take a month off Everybody know what they're supposed to do. Like we want to be able to get to that point, and it's and we know like this, like it's easy to push it off. Like oh, we're not there yet. Like there's no need to worry about that. But it's like no, eventually we're gonna get to that point, and then we don't want to be stuck. Like oh, dang, we don't have this set up. We don't have this set up. So it's like this is the building out phase, to where we can truly you know build this build a business that you know runs without us being you know 100 percent hands-on in it like that's that's the ultimate goal right now and that's not even you know that's apart from like revenue and uh, you know all of that like that's just like really 
the real deal, like honing in and tightening up, you know, getting the right people, getting the right systems and processes in place, because that's that's what's going to take us truly to the next level. Yeah, no doubt. And I agree with you. You ever, you ever read a book, The E-Myth, The E-Myth Revisited? The who? The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. This is a good one, man. man. It's like one of the best. He's like one of the you know small business guru. Kind of mm-hmm. talks about you know replacing yourself. He's saying you know just talking about you know um, if the business is relying on you, then you don't have a business. Right. right? Yeah. He just yeah. It's just a high paying job. <laughs> so right. You don't have a business. It's like you know what happens if your partner you know gets sick tomorrow. Right. You know what I mean. And you out here running and doing all the stuff that he was doing as much as you can do it. Well, how will you get sick? Right. Now, now who's doing the stuff? You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, nobody's doing it. So as much as your business depends on you, you don't have the business. So I right. started, started thinking about that. So I put process in place. One thing yeah. that helped me that will probably help y'all know is writing everything down. Yeah. You know Every single <laughs> thing that you do, write it down like instruction. Write everything down. Right. Like, that's what I did. And then now you can bring somebody in. You can show them, hey, look, do do this and then do that. Like I wrote everything down. I made orientations for every position. Like, I made all the positions. Like if I had a full business, how I would run it, and I made orientations for every position. So like, right. like yeah, I, that's, I made the orientation like a year ago, and then uh-huh. I just hired a transaction coordinator like a couple months ago. So the right. transaction coordinator came in. I had already had the presentation. You right. Know? <laughs> no, and that's what we we do most of that. Like, and that's funny you mentioned that. So my partner, he's actually building out the acquisitions module on Trainual, like as we speak, like. He's building out the onboarding for acquisitions on Trail. Because right now we got a bunch of Loom video. Like we've been using Loom since yeah. it's forever. But yeah. it's like you still got to package it up in a way to where people can like you can't just have a video. Like some people need the transcript. Some people yeah. can just watch the video. Like me, yeah. I can just I can watch you do something and then go out and go do it. Well, other people they need to be able to read it yeah. and yeah. just yeah. understand it and that comes from being a teacher. Like you understand people learn differently. Yeah. So getting that same mindset in the business, like, okay, just cause I learned like this doesn't mean that this person's going to learn like this. So let me make sure I have this set up for them. That way it's like, we got everything. So if you're this type of learner, you're visual, we got this. If you're auditory, we got an auto, you know, we got audio and stuff going through calls and stuff like that. That's, that's awesome, man. Have y'all paid anybody? Like, have y'all went to like any like uh, like any like event to learn like business? Yeah, stuff? man. Shoot, we done, man. We done invested about over fifty thousand dollars in education, man. That's a, that's what's up, man. Where, like, where have y'all been? Like, what was up? Some of the stuff. Um, so. We signed up for a group. Um, we're actually still a part of that group to the, this mastermind, uh, REI Game Changer. So we that that group kind of helped us, like really, because up until that point, this was what June. This was July 2021 when we signed up with this group, REI Game Changers, and they kind of helped us really. They kind of helped us really sc- structure stuff and scale it to where we're kind of at right now. Um, and that was just based off of we were coming off of June 2021. Like we didn't have no closings, no income, no nothing. Like June 2021 sucked. Like we had like five deals fall out of contract or something. But, but we ended up investing to the program. And then shortly after, like they taught us about KPIs. Like before then, like we really wasn't really like we had KPIs, but it wasn't like we wasn't really tracking the data like that. And so they really yeah. like, look, hey, you can't have a business if you don't know what it takes to do this or that. Like, you got to have your KPIs. But they taught us about the KPIs, um, helped us with, like, lead managers, like, learning what's a lead manager and, like, really departmentalizing our business to where it's like, all right, making sure and starting to help with process, I mean, uh, processes and procedures. So they kind of helped us 
with all of that. And then I think that was in – we joined them in July, and then we ended up hitting our first six-figure month in October of 2022. Oh, man, yeah, that's big, man. And that was just from implementing some of the stuff that they were, like, telling us, like, hey, y'all got to do this, this, this. So that, that, that helped us out a lot. Um, I'm trying to think what other – events we went to um we did steve train uh sales training oh, oh really Dang. Yeah, my partner last last april he, he flew out to phoenix and did, did a two-day was at steve train you know saw his office went through the you know the sales process because you know like like we all know it's sales and marketing so it's like he who has the best sales and the best marketing is the one who's going to win in this yeah. business so it was like we vested into that. Um, man, I'm trying to think. A couple of other little stuff we went to locally, you know, locally throughout uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. I know January of this year, we went to a mastermind with uh, Donovan Ruffin. He's in our market. That was a great, that was, yeah, that was a great. I know he was in uh, Dallas. Yeah, yeah, he's in our market. That was a great man. Two day, two day event they put on. Saw his whole operation, broke down everything. It was like, okay, like yeah, he doing it real big. Like we gotta, that's the work. So that that was really eye opening. Um, going to that mastermind. That was in January. Yeah, the rough man ain't doing big, man. Uh, I just, um, I went to, I went to keep there uh, two day trip. Yeah. Oh, we did that. Well, no, not the two day. We bought his um uh acquisition. That was that was like twenty twenty one. So yeah, we bought his art of acquisitions, and we we still utilize the stuff that Keith had in that program. Uh, that acquisition course. Yeah, man. I just I just got hooked back up with him again too. So I'm just gonna be a part of his like mentorship program or whatever. Man. Just trying to stay sharp. Keep, yeah. Keep got to be a student, man. It's man, Things is changing. Like, we got to be a student of the game. Like, we're big learners. Like, I love looking at, like, what other people are doing and seeing how they're being successful and, like, taking bits and pieces and implementing in our business. Like, perfect example with that Keith. Like, we just utilized. He talked he, in that course. He always talked about, like, leveraging your partner. Like, that's how we first learned about, like, hey, don't be the person making the decision. Just because you're making the offer, always put that blame on somebody else or leverage the partner. So my partner, we we just got a deal locked up yesterday, and he used that same tactic that we learned back in 2021. Like, oh, hey, you know, I want to be at 150. I want to get you to 150, but my, my partner said we really need to be at 130. But, you know, I kind of talked them up a little bit. I went back to the financial managers, and we got – 140 approved for you yeah. like stuff like that like it works like people be like because it's not it's you know it's not like you're the bad guy it's like oh the financial manager and your part the partner is the bad guy like they yeah. Don't, you know, yeah but it's like i'm fighting on your behalf man i'm going back yeah. To yeah. i do the same thing man I do, dude i do the same thing real estate i don't want a truck to truck it with if i do the same thing in truck it yeah. works <laughs> yeah, like, hey, it's not me, man. It's them, them folks over there. Like, man, it's been good, man. Uh, man, it's been good, man. I'm, I'm just gonna ask you one more question before we get out of here, man. What's one thing that you think that separate people that's successful in some real estate from those people who give up, fail, and never get started? Oh, it's consistency. That's it. If you consistently, like, literally, that's all it is. It is like, even when you, like, even with marketing channels and everything, like, people say, ah, cold calling don't work. It's like, no, bro, you just got to be consistent. Like, I can look through our CRM right now and then see how many cold call leads and people, like, we've, like, Man, we just put a lady under contract. Like I mentioned, uh, one of those original driving for dollars leads. She, we consistency and following up, like being consistent with her. Like, like I said, we had her in our first ever CRM when we was using Mojo Dollar. We were using Mojo Dollar back in 2020. 
Yeah. And she was in that CR. She was in there when we was using that as a CRM. Yeah. And we just now, we just now got her on the contract on uh, Tuesday. Man, that's crazy. Man. I was back in 2020. Dude, but it's, it's crazy. consistently doing the same thing over and over. And you got to look at it like, okay, like I know a lot of people, man, that I gave them the game for free. Like I told them, like, hey, bro, do this, do this, do that. Check back in on them two months later. Like, ah, yeah, man, you know, I got, I stopped. But it's like, I already told you, it's a volume game. And you got to be consistent. Like, you got to be able to get through all of those no's and those hang ups to get that one yes. Cause I was like, all you need is one. You get one yes, that's $30,000. What you, yeah. That's not worth going through that for thirty thousand dollars. Like <laughs> more than what you ever had. It was just like, yeah, I'm okay with. And that's kind of how I approached it back then. I was like, and at that time, I was just like, shoot, three thousand dollars is a lot. So I was like, man, you mean to tell me I just got to make phone calls, like, talk to some people, and I can get five thousand dollars from this? Like, what? like I'm gonna do that all day. I ain't even had no, I ain't had no script or nothing back then. It was just like, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm just thinking, hey, I'm just talking. I'm, I'm like, hey, I know, hey, one of these phone calls could be five thousand dollars. So I'm just like, I'm gonna yes. do it. No doubt, man. So that's great. Yeah, I think it's true, man. Consistency is key, man. But like, I like I tell people, man, consistency is life struggle, man. It's like no matter what you're doing, the struggle yeah. to be consistent is the struggle, right? Right. To Consistent is the prize. It's like, you know, it's not the results. It's, you know, it's the process. You know what I'm saying? It's the consistency. Right. You can do that in anything. You're going to be successful. So You can't start and stop. Like, every time you start and stop, you're losing momentum. Like, since we set forth of doing this business, like, back in 20, really 2019, 2020, like, we haven't stopped, like, at all, like it wasn't like ah, oh, we took we gonna take a month off, figure out some uh, like you know, get the shiny object syndrome. Like oh dang, they talking about drop shipping. Let's go ahead and figure that out. Let's do this. Like nah, like hey, let's just stay focused on this wholesaling stuff and be good at it. Like let's get be a master at this and just keep you know doing the same thing over and over until we get you know the results that we want. Yeah, no doubt, man. That's awesome, man. It must feel real good to finally leave your nine to five, man. How yeah. did it feel walking out that door? Like, how did it feel? Man, it was bittersweet, man. Like I told you, it was. It was. Part of me was like, "Dang, man! Like this is." Like it was like, "Dang, like, bro, I've been doing this for like eight. I've been doing this for eight years. Like, this is all I know. Like, just being here. Like, okay, I got my summer break. I'm gonna be back in August. Like." I was just in a routine, and it was like, now that routine is about to be shaken up. So I was like, all right, you know, kind of like I said, man, I didn't, it wasn't like I didn't like what I was doing. Like, I didn't have no ill will towards the people I was working with. Like, everything was good. So it was just like one of those things, like, yeah, let's let's, let's go ahead and give our full attention to this because I was like, look, we've already done a lot. Like, we've closed, like, since we started, over a million dollars in wholesale fees, like, since we started. Yeah. So it was just like, and that was on a, me really being on a part-time basis. So it was just like, I can imagine what it would look like if I'm able to give my full undivided attention to what needs to be done and where we would go. So, yeah. Yeah, man, dude, you have that crushing it, man. You have that crushing it. Um, I mean, we all made it already, man. It's, it's crazy. It's like, man, I'm, I'm like, man, I got to start doing this and doing that. It's like, you know, yeah. so, man, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. When you reached out, I know I had to get you on here, man. But it's been real good, man. Uh, and it's been, I appreciate you coming on, man. Man, we're gonna go ahead and sign off, man. Uh, what can people, you know, find out more about you, man? If they want to, you know, check you out. Um, well, I mean, I got an Instagram. I got to get my content back up. I mean, that that was me 
for another reason. I was like, man, I can barely post content. I'm so tired. Like, I'm working and I got to work on the business. It's like content is an afterthought. So it's my job to get back on my content. But I mean, I'm on Instagram. What's my name on here? But Justin underscore K Black on Instagram. Yep. And then I got what uh, my Facebook page is just my name, Justin Black. But I got some gems on there, some some stuff I've been posting, just trying to get more, you know, sharing sharing the stuff that I'm doing because I'm I, I've been low key for a long long time. Like I just been trying to grind. Yeah, no doubt, man. We'll uh, go go check Justin out, man, on IG. Um, man, he definitely got a lot of knowledge. You can tell, you know. Got a lot of knowledge about doing deals. It can really help some people. So, y'all go check them out, man. But for this show, man, we're going to go ahead and let y'all have it. We out of here. Peace out. Appreciate you, Justin, man. Y'all have a good one. No problem. Appreciate it.